Hello and welcome to this episode of SPSS One on One series with Worry Analytics. Today we look at the one-way analysis of variance or one-way ANOVA. We look at how do we run it in SPSS, what are the assumptions, how do we interpret the, fi uh, the results and how to report the findings for our research. Today we use a data set that has been slightly been modified to bring out the principles of um, one-way ANOVA. If you want to access that data set, the link is in the description of the video. You can download and follow through. Here is our data set and our focus is going to be uh, on two variables, that's treatment and zones of inhibition. Remember, for one-way ANOVA, you run it when you have one categorical independent variable with more than two levels. That is our treatment. If you look at the variable view and you check the values of our treatment, you will see that we have three levels of that variable. So that is condition number one, an independent categorical variable with more than two levels. Otherwise, if they were two, we would use a t-test. The second condition for using um, ANOVA is when you are having a numerical outcome variable which in our case is the zones of inhibition. Just for context, we are looking at whether a given plant has got uh, antibacterial activity against a given microorganism. Antimicrobial activity is measured by zones of inhibition, millimeters, whereas uh, the treatment or the, that plant, they used three solvents for extraction of the active ingredients. That is, uh, they used water or the aqueous uh, solution, ethanol, and then acetone. So we want to compare whether the, the, the mean zones of inhibition for each of these three different treatments are the same. Is there a statistically significant difference in the mean zones of inhibition for the three different treatments? So for, for us to be able to know whether there is a significant difference or not in the means of the zones of inhibition, we shall run uh, a one-way analysis of variance. Here is how to get it. Simply go to analyze, compare means, and then run the one-way analysis of variance, one way or not. You will see a dialog box open here um, with all your variables on the left. So we want to push the dependent variable, our outcome, the numerical outcome variable under the dependent variables list, which is zone of inhibition. We shall push it there. Then under factor, we put there the dependent categorical variable, which we've said should be at least three levels and above. So we shall put uh, treatment under factor, so under post hoc tests, you have a number of post hoc tests that you can use for multiple comparisons. Some that can be used under when the equivariances assumption has been met, or there are those that can be used when the assumptions are not met. We are not going to go into the details of this, but quite often you will need to know that uh, when you have equal groups, well, most of the times you use the two keys, if the groups are unequal, most times you use the, the, the scuffy. But also, on Ferron is very common, but I want you to select the Tokis post hoc test and then continue. Under options, select descriptives, uh, check the homogeneity test of variance, and then you can choose the means plot, then continue. Once everything is set, simply click OK. And here you will see the results of the one-way ANOVA. First, you will see the descriptive statistics. You can see that uh, for our three types of extracts, we have the numbers for each extract, and then the means plus the standard deviations. The second table is very important to look at. For one-way ANOVA, there are four main assumptions that you have to fulfill. And the assumptions include, one, you should have random samples selected from each population. Observations are independent. Otherwise, if the observations are dependent, such as before and after on the same participants, you would use a repeated um, measures ANOVA. Then uh, population variance is the same in each group. 
and the dependent variable is normally distributed. However, not all these assumptions are equally important, especially when we are in one way or another which uses an F-test, which is a robust test that can be used even when normality is violated. The main assumption here is the assumption of equal variances in each group. When you go to our output, that is the assumption we are testing right now under the test of homogeneity of variances. And when you look at this, we are based on means and we are using the Levinis test of, to test for equality of variances. Remember the hypothesis under this Levinis test is telling us that the variance is the same in all the three groups of uh, treatment. The alternative for Levinis test is telling you that it, they are not equal. So we are interested in a non-significant uh, p-value for us to, be, to say that this assumption has been fulfilled. In one way or another, we want when we have equal variances. And equal variances, we will declare that when the p-value here is above 0 0.05, meaning there are no statistically significant differences in the variances, so they are equal. You can see that our p-value is above 0 0.05. Since we've passed this, we can go ahead and now interpret the results of one way and over. So one way and over results, you can see here, yeah, you have between groups, within groups, there are sums of squares, degrees of freedom, uh, the mean squares, f test, but we are interested in the overall p-value for this analysis. Since our overall p-value here is uh, less than 0 0.05, it is less than our significance level, usually set at 0 0.05, then we can say there are statistically significant differences in the mean zones of inhibition for the different treatment groups. But remember we have got three groups and we do not now know which group is different from the other. Is it group one, the ethanol extracts having higher means than uh, the acetone? Is it acetone versus ethanol? We can't tell. So that's where now the multiple comparisons come in uh, handy. They are very useful here for you to know which groups are significantly different from the other. You, can, you should only go ahead to interpret the multiple comparisons if the overall p-value for the ANOVA is statistically significant. If not, you do not need to go to multiple comparisons. So now it is significant, we have to interpret the multiple comparisons. Here you can see that we've used the Tukey's HSD uh, multiple comparison test and we have the treatment, but like we are comparing this treatment to see which one is higher or lower than the other. And you see they pull out, uh, say the first one is aqueous extract being compared to ethan extract. Then again, the same being compared to acetone. So let's start with aqueous versus ethanol extract. You are seeing this is labeled I, this is labeled J, and the mean difference is I minus J. What is this side minus this? And you see the mean difference is 0 0.519. And, the, and we have here a p-value. Here, the p-value is above 0 0.05, indicating that there is no significant difference between aqueous and ethanol extract. But when we look at aqueous and ethanol extract, when you get this mean minus this mean, if I can just show the descriptives, if you got aqueous, my, the mean for aqueous minus the mean for acetone, this is what you would do, get 3.425. And the p-value is statistically significant. So far now we've gotten where one difference lies. The overall told us there are significant difference but wasn't telling us which one from the other. So we've now seen that aqueous extract is significantly different from acetone extract. And you can see that there is a star against that figure indicating that the mean difference is statistically significant at this level. 
The next comparison is now for ethanol, and then you see that ethanol versus aqueous extract, the same comparison you had here, aqueous ethanol it is now ethanol which has been pulled out. You can see ethanol versus aqueous, it is the same value now that it is negative, they have turned the subtract, subtraction the other way round. Yeah, now here ethanol versus acetone is statistically significant, p value is 0 0.0. 029. Then last comparison is acetone extract versus uh, each of these. From here you can see that it is actually acetone which is significantly different from either aqueous or ethanol extract. The same things are kind of repeated up here but this one summarizes all. This last one acetone is significant with this you can see star and is also significant with this one here. Just as we saw acetone and ethanol above here, the same value is here. And we also saw acetone and aqueous. Significant it is also here. Next you have the zones, the homogeneous subsets. The talk is, is showing you which sets are kind of similar from the other. Here we can see that we have a subset having only acetone with 19.7 and then we have another subset having ethanol extract, their means here, and aqueous extract. So these two are similar, the ones that are in a subset are similar, in other words they are different from this one, from acetone, just as we've seen in the acetone, um, in the multiple comparisons, where acetone is significantly different from these two, meaning uh, these two are kind of similar to each other. This can also be seen in the means plot. When you plot the aqueous, the values are closer to each other. This is significantly different from this and this, whereas these are not any different from each other. That's the use of the multiple comparisons. It's showing you what is similar, even when we have differences, but which of those groups are similar and which one is different from the others. Next, let me just show you how you would present these results uh, for your research study. Once you've finished the running the analysis, it is time to report your findings. Firstly, you need to have uh, a table for descriptives. You have this table for descriptives, and I uh, can just have a treatment here, the three different uh, treatments or extracts, the, the, their numbers, and then the mean plus their standard deviations. You can decide to combine them together just like I've done, mean plus or minus standard deviation. You can see we have the mean 23.13 here, plus or minus it is standard deviation, which is 3.981. Yeah, you do that even for the ethan extract, where we have 49 and then the mean is 22.61. The standard deviation here is 4.232 and the acetone extract you do the same thing that is just a, a descriptive table and you can depending on the requirements of your school you may have to add some brief description uh, for this cut table and then you can present the results of the statistical uh, results so we can say here that one way analysis of variance was performed to compare the effect of three different treatments on zone of inhibition. We are trying to look at the effect of treatment versus the zone of inhibition or the antibacterial activity to be specific. The results revealed that there was a statistically significant difference in mean zones between at least two groups. Now here we are presenting the statistics of this table. We have the F-test at two degrees of freedom and then the degrees of freedom within groups which is 147 the value uh, I need to put this in brackets the value is 5.203 and the overall p-value is uh, 0 0.007 uh -huh, so we finish picking this we can now proceed to reporting as well results for multiple comparisons can see that here, yeah, state the type of comparison you used. We used the Tokis test for multiple comparisons which found that the mean value 
zone of inhibition was significantly different between acetone extract and aqueous. We saw that acetone and aqueous, there was a statistically significant difference. Okay, the p value was 0.04. .04. It is here, and then we state the confidence interval. Then um, the mean zone of inhibition was also significantly different between acetone and ethan extract. Acetone, ethan extract. Ethanol acetone, same values, yeah. P value 0 .00, 0 0.029 and their confidence intervals. So there was no statistically significant difference in mean zone of inhibition between ethanol extract and aqueous extract. Yeah, that's how we can run a one way analysis of variance, interpret the results, and also present our results for, um, in our research study. So next we look at the two-way analysis of variance. How do we run it in SPSS? How do we interpret results? And how do we present results for our analysis? So don't forget to like, subscribe to our channel so that you do not miss out any of the episodes. See you in the next video.